Hello everyone, welcome to today's video. Today we'll be talking about pistol disassembly, reassembly, and repairs. Specifically speaking, we have here an airsoft Glock. Now this was made after a Glock 17, which model I am unsure. But today's video will be sorted into four main topics. The first one will be how to take the slide off of the body. Even though this is a very basic subject, I'll still be demonstrating and teaching you how to do it because this video was made completely for beginners. So if you want to learn some of the more advanced methods, go to the description below. I have all the timestamps listed out for you. Now the second part will be the disassembly of the upper body, the third part will be the disassembly of the lower body, and last but not least, the fourth part will be the reassembly of the entire thing. Now before we begin, make sure to take the magazine out, make sure it's empty, and put it to the side. Because, you know, it's a force of habit to put a magazine inside, rack the slide, and pull the trigger, so who knows, something might happen. So just for safety precautions, put your magazines to the side, make sure the barrel is empty. Even though this is an airsoft gun, and we know that it won't fire without a magazine, but just to be sure, make sure it's empty, point it to safe direction, and pull the trigger. Now, we have the gun empty and safe. So the first thing, the first part that we're going to talk about is how to take the slide, which is the moving part of a gun, a pistol, off of the entire assembly. So first off, make sure you already cocked the hammer so that the hammer inside is on a backward position. I'll go more in depth later. After you cock the gun, you want to take your hand, put it on the frame, and pull the slide backward just a tiny bit, and then pull this, the slide lock, downwards with your thumb and index or thumb and middle finger, and then let the slide go, and make sure you hold the slides, because if it falls on the ground or something and it breaks the nose, it's not going to be good for your gun. So that's all there is to it, to taking the slide off of your Glock. Now feel free to get some drinks, take a break, and later on we'll talk about how to disassemble your top body. Okay everyone, welcome back. Now we have our slide, and we'll first talk about how to disassemble the upper body, which is basically the entire slide itself. Now the slide consists of your recoil spring, which is the part that uh, makes the barrel go forward and back during firing. Okay, so that's the first part that you're gonna take off. So just push the recoil spring forward, and then pull it up, like so and pull it out of that socket in front. So if you want to change it into a different material um, recoil screen, feel free to do it yourself. However, if you want to learn how to do it, comment down below and I will make a tutorial in the future. Now back to the slide. After you take the recoil spring out, you can take the barrel. How you want to do it, take, push this middle part forward and your barrel will loosen from this air valve. So for airsoft guns, the gas goes in from here, comes out from this hole and pushes your BB or airsoft pellet through the barrel towards your target. So after you push your barrel forward, take your uh, barrel, angle it upward, and pull it out. It's that simple. So for airsoft guns, there are sometimes one barrel, and sometimes there is an outer and inner barrel. For the inner barrel, you can adjust the hop-up, which is basically how high or low your bullet goes. So that this is the actual important part of the barrel, and this is basically just for show, to make it look more like a real gun, since airsoft pellets are way smaller than real bullets. So this is the barrel, put it to the side, you can customize it however you want, and then back to the slide. That's basically all when you want to do a field disassembly or field strip to do repairs or to lubricate it. Now, if you really want to take the entire thing apart to change the plunger, that's what I call it because, you know, it plunges. If you want to take the plunger apart, change it into a new plunger or switch out the sights, this is what you do. Take a screwdriver, unscrew the screw at the back. And depending on the company, they sometimes have a uh, removable slide cover plate or some has an integrated slide cover plate with the plunger part, such as this one. So if it's integrated, you just take the entire thing up just pull it outwards, and it will pop right off. So, you want to make sure you keep the spring, okay? Because this spring is what keeps the plunger plunging. And if you don't take care of it, it's going to fly somewhere that you have no idea where it's gone. So, make sure you have a bucket or a piece of cloth under your gun, on your table, or else it's going to get dirty. And I don't have a cloth because of demonstration purposes, because white uh, on black looks more contrasting as colors. So, that's all there is to it, to disassembling the slide, and of course the front sides, if you want to switch it out, there's a screw drive. There's a screw right here, and I'm pretty sure you know how to unscrew screws, so I'm not going to demonstrate that. So that's all for the upper slide, and we're going to move this to the side, and later for the fourth part, when we demonstrate how to reassemble everything, we'll come back and show you guys how to put them back. Okay, so up next, part three. Part three, we will be talking about how to disassemble the lower body. First of all, let's first take this pin and this pin out. So these pins are what's keeping the slide lock, the trigger, and also the trigger mechanism housing in place. So let's do that right now. Take a hole punch if you have them, or if you don't have them, you can take anything sharp. Just make sure not to damage your pins. Uh, basically, it doesn't matter if you damage them, it's just going to not look as good. And if you really, really break them, well, that's on you, okay? So some of the pins, they have these teeth on one side of them. So this side is going to be on the back side. 
By backside, I mean the part that you're gonna push it out from. So by default, all stock blocks have their backside on the right side. So you push in from the left side and the pin comes out from the right side. Okay, now how you put it back, it doesn't matter. It's just personal preference. But I'm just telling you this because if you buy a new gun, it's always going to be go in from the left and out from the right. Okay, now after you take it apart, you can take your slide lock, pull it out. Make sure you keep this tiny spring somewhere that you can find it. Don't let it fly away because it's very thin, it's very small, and if you lose it, you're going to have to replace it. Okay, put those to the side. So we have now the pins. So for different clock versions, there might be one more pin here, and also there might be one more pin somewhere else. I'm not sure, but I do know that there will be different number of pins for different clock generations and different clock models. So after we take the slide lock out, we can take a look on the inside. The locking block area, it also has your slide lock, your slide release catch, okay? So this thing, the one that moves the pin down, if you want to remove it, take a look at this locking block. You can see, all right, this is your lock itself. And under it, there's a leaf spring. This middle thing right here, it goes down and up. So if you want to remove your locking mechanism, you want to first push this leaf spring downwards all the way, depress it all the way. And then you will find that it suddenly becomes loose and then you can pull You can pull your slide lock out there. So, you see this groove right here? This groove is what the spring was locking onto. And we can see the leaf, leaf spring is basically just a piece of heat treated metal so that it's super springy, but it's just a piece of metal. So that piece of metal grabs onto this groove right here. So I can put this to the side. Now, moving to the back part of it, this is the uh, trigger housing trigger mechanism housing. So some models will have a, another small screw here just as a precaution as a secondary um, method to keep the housing in place. So after you take out the pin, if there's a screw here, you want to take that off. If there's not, then you're good to go. Take that screw off and also either your locking block pin or your locking block screw, whichever you have or both. Make sure you keep all of those secure, somewhere secure. And then after that, you can take your locking block, pull it up directly upwards. Okay, and then after that, your trigger spring will come up uh, all together. So you want to make sure it doesn't fly anywhere, and you want to take it off and put it somewhere safe. So the trigger spring locks onto this pin right here on the locking block, and also this pin right here on the trigger bar. So after you take that spring off, you can take your trigger housing, trigger mechanism housing out, and make sure this pin, under this pin is a spring, okay? Hold on, let me take it out and I will show you. Right here, there's a spring, and make sure you keep that as well because it does, it does tend to fly every which way. That tiny spring right there. Okay, so put that to the side. So this is the trigger and trigger bar. The trigger bar attaches to the trigger mechanism housing and the trigger attaches to the locking block which attaches to the gun body, the lower body. And then this piece is just a piece with the serial number that goes at the bottom of the polymer body, like that. That's the serial number. Okay, put that to the side. And the actual trigger mechanism housing looks like this. I tend to try not to mess with it because as you can see, all of the parts are tight, tight, tight inside of there. But if you really want to switch out the parts or do any repairs or lubrication on the small parts, all you have to do is push these pins out and all of these parts will come flying outwards. So disassemble at your own risk, okay? Now I will tell you guys how the trigger works. So basically when you pull the trigger, you pull the trigger bar and this trigger bar pushes this piece which in turn releases the hammer, and the hammer hits the gas valve for airsoft pistols, and for real uh, pistols, it hits the primer on the back of the bullet. So, before you put this back, make sure to cock the hammer back, or your slide might get stuck. Okay, so last but not least, we have our magazine release. So as you can see inside of here, there is a tiny, tiny spring right here. Okay, this spring, you want to push it to the side, and there's a groove on the magazine lock, on the magazine release. So you wanna pull that spring out of that groove, like so. And then push the magazine release, release all the way. The magazine release out. So this is what the magazine release looks like. And this is the groove that the spring was locking onto. All right? And this is what the magazine release spring looks like. So put that to the side and that finishes our part three, the disassembly of the lower body. So all in all, we have our trigger mechanism housing, which has the hammer, 
and this piece, which I have no idea what the name is, but I do know that it is the part that locks the slide in place, and then this is the spring for it. This is the trigger spring, and this is the trigger and trigger bar that goes onto the spring, which goes onto the locking block. And then this is the magazine release. This is the magazine release spring. This is the serial, serial number bar. This is the slide stop lever spring, and this is the slide stop lever, and this is the slide lock. And these two are the pins that go onto your polymer body, and these are the screws that keep the things in place. Okay, so that's all for part three, how to disassemble the lower body, and moving on to part four, how to put everything back together. Now, I know that was overwhelming, so you feel free to go get some water, take a break, deep breaths, and we're gonna take this monstrosity and put them all back together. In three, two, one. Okay, first of all, we're gonna install everything in a backwards order that we took it apart from. So first of all, God damn it! the magazine release and the magazine release spring. The spring goes in first and take a look in the polymer body. There is a rectangular hole right here. That is exactly where the spring is supposed to go. So just put it there and push it in. I'd recommend you use something, an object to push it in or else if the spring, you know, it's a very thin wire. So if it goes into your nail, it's going to hurt like hell and it's going to get a lot of oil, lubricant, and possibly even rust inside of your body, so that wouldn't be good. Okay, so after you push it in, make sure it's in place, and then take your mag release, and push it in just like the way we took it apart. And for this step, make sure that your spring doesn't get in the way of the hole. Okay, so I finally got my mag release in. After that, you wanna take your mag release spring, and loop it back onto the groove that it was resided in, like so. Okay, so the spring is back there and we have our mag release back and working. If you really wanna make sure, of course, you can just take a magazine, make sure it's empty, even though you have no way of firing right now because, you know, everything's empty. But make sure it stays in place, and that's one of the directest way, one of the most direct way to make sure that your mag release is working. Okay, up next, our trigger mechanism housing goes like that, and then let me show you before we really do it. The trigger bar, take the upper part first, slide it into the groove here and then take the bottom extruding part and put it next to this extruding piece of rectangular metal thingy like so so what it does is this pushes against that and then out pops the hammer so this is the part that locks onto the hammer when it's cocked backwards so you want to keep your magazine uh, your trigger bar and your trigger mechanism housing like that in that orientation and then take this piece, put it in like so, take your spring and put it in like so, making sure that it's tight in place and making sure that it will not fly out anywhere. And then after that, you can just place it into the polymer casing. And you can see here, there's a groove, a semicircular groove, which is for this round part right here. So make sure you align that and it should just slide in like that. Now, after you put this in place, you wanna avoid it from coming out again. So for this step, you can first place the pin back and screw on the screw first. So by doing so, we make sure that the trigger mechanism housing will not pop up again. And by doing that, we will avoid any of the tiny springs from going haywire and flying off of our radar, okay? So screw that on and then take your trigger, let it drop into our trigger guard, like so. Okay, it's starting to look somewhat more like a gun now. So after that, take your seri serial number plate Take your serial number plate, place it face down into your gun, into your casing, like so. And then take your locking block and your trigger spring. Place the locking block inward. Take your magazine out if you have one present. Take your locking block, put it inside. And before you place it entirely forward, you want to notice the pin that we were talking about before when we were disassembling it. The one that locks onto our trigger spring. We want to make sure that goes in right now. And then after that, you can take your tool or your fingers if they're nimble enough and secure it to the extruding part of the trigger bar. Okay, like so. So after you're done with that, that's the entire thing for the trigger mechanism. So you can screw back the locking block onto your frame. After that, make sure the entire thing is flush with your frame. Okay, that looks good, that looks good. And then we can place the trigger pin back and also our slide stop. So take a look at the hole for the pin, okay? Make sure it's a circular hole. If it's not, try to align everything as best as possible. And at the same time, you need to put your slide stop back. So remember this tiny springy thingy? This goes onto this little groovy thingy right here. 
you see that U-shaped groove on the slide stop. The, springs, the springy thingy goes on the locky thingy like that, okay? Okay, don't need to remember all of the terminologies, just know that the springy thingy goes on the locky thingy like so. And then, take a look on your locking block and your trigger mechanism. There will be a tiny slit right there next to your trigger. What you want to do is you want to take your lock, your slide stop, and slide it into that groove very, very carefully. And make, your, make sure your spring goes in as well. Okay? To make sure that you're you, you have succeeded, you will know by checking. Your slide stop should be taut with the lines, and then the hole should still resemble a hole. You should still see some light. So you can take something sharp, make sure everything is aligned. The inside is a perfect circular, circular hole. You can see light, and then take your pick, take your pin, push it in, shimmy it around, and just like that, we have our trigger, trigger, trigger bar, trigger mechanism housing, and our slide stop back in place. And last but not least, we have our slide lock. So same thing, you can push it halfway in first, just to make sure that it's in there, and to put it in place. And then by using your thumb, keep pressure on it, and then with the other hand, push your leaf spring downwards, push your leaf spring downwards all the way, and at the same time, push your lock inside. And then align the groove that we talked about before with your leaf spring, and then that will be in place. So that's all. Make sure your trigger works. That's good. Hammer pops up. Push it back down because we need it down for the assembly of the slide. So, moving on to part 4.1, how to reassemble the slide area of the gun. So here we have the slide frame, the plunger, the plunger spring, the back sights, the recoil spring, and the barrel, and of course, the rear sight screw. So first things first, take your plunger. So how the plunger works is basically there are two separate parts. This is separable, and this thing plunges. That's why I call it the plunger. So if you want to switch out the plunger, this is how you do it. Just take it apart, switch in your new plunger. Okay? So if you want to re reassemble it, take your plunger, take your plunger spring, put it into one of the grooves, and then take your plunger face down, and just drop it into the slide frame like so. And then take your rear sights, place it into the rear sight groove, like that. Use one of your fingers to push it in place, and take your other hand, to screw on the rear sight, rear sight screw, like so. And after that, take your barrel, slide it into the hole, all the way forward, and then push it back to meet the plunger. And then take your recoil spring. Uh, all recoil springs have different designs. Uh, mine has the silicone, uh, silicone plate that pushes onto the end of the gun, but yours might be different, so uh, take caution. Anyway, just put the recoil spring back to where it was supposed to be. And that's it for the upper part, the upper body, basically the slide. So, moving on to 4.3, how to put the slide onto the lower body. Make sure your hammer is still caught backwards, push down all of these levers, and okay, after that, take your slide, and move it all the way backwards. If this happens, that means your spring is protruding too much, and it's getting stuck by the slide stop. So what you can do is push it up a bit, or pull the slide stop downward while putting it back. And then, you're done, will be working just as normal. And again, although we just reassembled it, make sure there's nothing in the chamber, aim it at somewhere safe, and pull the trigger, and everything is just as it was supposed to be. So that's all for how to disassemble and reassemble your Glock. It works, the same principle works for all Glock models and generations, but as I said, this is a Glock 17. So there might be slight differences between models, but it's basically all the same. So that's all, and happy shooting.